Hi, I'm Andy Jones, your host for Art Talk. And today we are going to be painting on terracotta pots and you can use them indoors or outdoors. Okay, for today's lesson, we are going to be painting on an unglazed terracotta pot. And we're going to be using our Folk Art Matte Acrylics, and we are going to seal them with our Mod Podge Outdoor Formula. Let's put some colors out on our palette. And we were here in the Atlanta area experiencing a beautiful springtime week. And then what happened, Stephen? Because suddenly... We call it, we call it Fool's Spring. Well, yes, it was great for a little while and then suddenly cold again. But it's just about time to start uh, planting seedlings and things like that. So these little terracotta pots are great for that. I have put out Thicket and Sunny Yellow on my palette. And I'm going to use a big one inch flat brush and we are going to paint just kind of an out of focus foliage uh, effect on our pot. Now, keep in mind, this unsealed terracotta is going to absorb the paint like a sponge. So it's going to dry pretty quickly. So I'm picked up a uh, thicket on my one inch brush and I'm just going to start brushing this on my pot. And it doesn't matter what size pot you want to use. I'm using a little four inch pot here today to demonstrate. And I think that's the favorite size pot that Stephen likes to use when he's starting his indoor outdoor garden. You no, know, we talk about it all the time here, how much I love gardening and how good <laughs> at it I am and how I- Two how, green yeah. thumbs. All right, so I'm just brushing on the thicket in no particular order, no brush stroke direction, just kind of random. And now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of sunny yellow and I'm going to start to brush that on and looking very yellow now. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more thicket and this will start to get pretty dry, pretty quick because of the terracotta. So just pick up some more thicket and brush that in. We want this background to look like out of focus foliage. And Stephen's gonna fill me in on the correct video slash photography term for something out of focus in the background. We've talked about this in previous episodes. It's called bokeh. Okay, so this is bokeh. Or bokeh, depending on... Depending on whether you're highest in bouquet or bokeh. Yeah, correct. We used to just call it selective focus, but that was in the old days before we had anything digital. So just using the thicket to brush on the main color of the background pick up a little sunny yellow, and then I'm gonna just start brushing that in. Random little X's, just to blend and soften that color. If you don't like it very yellow, you can come back with more thicket and simply cover that up. And you're leaving the rim blank? I, I am leaving the rim unpainted. Sounds so much nicer than blank. Yeah, it does. And it is kind of fun to paint on this uh, unsealed surface because the paint does grab pretty quick, and you can tell exactly what your background is going to look like on the spot. You don't have to wait around for something to dry or change or anything. This is happening in real time. Once your background is the way you like it, nothing too jarring, everything just how you want it, we're going to set this aside to dry. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of folk art acrylics, which I absolutely love using. I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below, and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven-piece set of Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> and I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. Now, I have my little uh, flower pot here with my background that has dried, and we're gonna put in some grasses. So I'm gonna pick up Thicket and Sunny Yellow, making a light green color, and I'm using a number 10 filbert brush. 
which is like a flat brush, but it doesn't have any corners. It's completely rounded at the end. Uh, and it's a great brush for lots of things we're going to do today. And if you hold the brush up on the chisel edge, you can create a nice fine line. If that doesn't show up, I'm going to make the next one a little bit lighter so it's easier to see. What did you say the name of this brush was? This is a filbert brush. Filbert sounds like the name of like an old-timey gardener. So that's, that works out. <laughs> it does. Well, they do make um, a, a filbert-shaped brush that's much, much longer, and that's called an eggbert. Oh, no. That so, just, that can't be, we gotta it, stop that. It, you know, there's all sorts of weird names for all sorts of brushes. I want you to see that these are not straight lines and they're not uh, an even width. So we've got some variation going on there, which is one of the things that you always want to have in your painting. So we're gonna do another one. So start with a brush up on its edge and we're gonna use a light pressure and then I want it wider, I can press. And that's how we get that, like a little fat blade of grass. And we'll do another one. And every time you mix this green color, you're going to get some sort of variation. Now these are not flower stems. These are just pieces of grass in the background because we're not gonna really be painting leaves or anything today. So we need to put something in the background uh, for interest and to indicate that these are little wildflowers growing in some sort of field or meadow. So they don't need to be perfect and you don't want to always line them up with an X and if you do have an X where they cross make sure it's not dead center in the pot. And we'll do just a couple more and you can do them from the bottom up to the top if you want. All right so we're going to let these dry for just a fraction of a second. Okay, we are going to start to paint our flowers on our little flower pot here. We're gonna put out some yellow ochre on our palette, and we are going to begin to paint our little wildflowers. Now, what wildflowers are these, Stephen asked? What wildflowers are these? Well, I Maybe. wish I could tell you, Stephen. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. They are just generic wildflowers. Now, if we had been to the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center just outside of Austin, Texas, I'm sure we would find out exactly what these flowers are. Um, and she had a passion for beautification and wildflowers. And now you see miles of interstate highways with beautiful wildflowers on the shoulders of the road. And that's part of Lady Bird Johnson's legacy. So I'm gonna show you how to create these wildflowers without using any sort of pattern. So what I'm going to do is use my number eight filbert and I'm going to make a dot. So we have a little spot there. Now, our wildflowers are not going to be a circle around that dot, but what we are going to do is have our back petals shorter than the petals closer to the viewer. So I'm going to make a petal there at the back. And then that's our petal that we'll say is at 12 o'clock. Then at nine o'clock, I'm gonna make another petal and that's gonna kind of droop down to the left side and then turn my flower over. And my three o'clock petal is going to droop that direction. And then my six o'clock flower is going to be longer and come up the front. All right, so now we've got four petals on our flower, and we're loosely going to fill in between the petals with, for lack of a more descriptive uh, way of saying it, we're gonna put in some petal-shaped strokes. So we're gonna touch down and pull, touch down and pull, touch down and pull, and you see how these got longer going out toward three o'clock? They didn't fill in, they're not touching, they're not all the same size. They're not all the same shape. Always want to remember, not the same size, not the same shape, not the same distance apart. And I think Stephen was going to be needle pointing that on a pillow for me, but he hasn't gotten around to that yet. I did tell you I would do that. Let me, I'll get on that this weekend. Okay. 
All right, so we're continuing around our flowers, just kind of making these little petal shaped strokes. And again, not the same size, not the same shape, not the same distance apart. So we have our undercoat of our petals done. So we can take a small breather here and I'm gonna wipe out my number eight filbert brush and I'm going to put some medium yellow out on my palette. And I'm sure Stephen can tell us exactly what we're going to do next. I would assume a uh, layer. That's exactly right. We are going to layer some petals on. And my next lighter yellow color from Yellow Ochre is going to be medium yellow. So I'm going to load my number eight filbert with some yellow. And we are going to stroke over our flower. Some of these petals will go directly on top of some of the yellow ochre petals, and some will go in between, but they will not be the same size, the same shape, or the same distance apart. My man Filbert is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in the garden today. You are not kidding. Before we started filming, I was asking Stephen about his gardening skills, and he does not have any. And I thought, well, that is something else that Young Mr. White and I have in common. I am nobody's gardener. Yeah, nobody's ever asked me to take care of their plants before. And I think that's for a reason. And they're oh. probably smart for that. Yes, I give, give people good credit for never asking me to take care of their plants. So we've done a layer of yellow ochre petals. And now, Stephen, we're going to do a layer of sunny yellow petals. I was really scared you were going to ask me the name of the color. And I, I would have said yellow. <laughs> No, 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 not, not going to stress you out with that today because we're, we're recovering from the fake uh, spring that we had. So we're going to start again. And we're just overlapping these petals. There's going to be some that completely cover and some that are not covering. Some are going to be wider and some are going to be more narrow. Just let the brush do the work for you. Touch down, apply a little pressure, and then lift and pull toward the center of the flower. Okay, that's one little flower done. Easy peasy. Wouldn't you agree, Stephen? That was so easy. So easy. I'm doing it over here. But <laughs> off, off screen, I'm doing it. Okay. It's so easy, I can film this video and do one of my own <laughs> all at the same time. Stephen is so multi-talented and a multitasker. All right, let's do another flower just to go over the house again. So I'm going to move to a different area on my pot, and this time I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm not at the same height that I did this other flower. And I'm going to put my dot where my center is going to be, and we will once again start with our yellow ochre. And we're going to make a small stroke at 12 o'clock, a longer droopier stroke at 3 o'clock, a droopy stroke at 9 o'clock, and then we'll do a long, the longer stroke right down at 6 o'clock. So now that we've got our position of our flower on our pot, and we're going to just start to add in our strokes. And don't Play around with them forever. Put them on, leave them alone, and you will be much happier with how your little wildflowers come in together. All this talk about 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock reminds me of square dancing. Now, in your younger days, were you a square dancer? Well, okay, so they... they there was... Did they do it in school? Yeah, I was about to say, if you grew up in the South, the Southeast, I don't know about other parts of the South, there was this one like random week or two week period every year for PE where they taught you square dancing yes. for some reason. And so they, they teach were... teach you that 12, 3, 6, 3 move. Your do -si do Yeah, your the do -si -do. left. Uh-huh. Promenade. Yeah, all that. And I just have to ask like the public school system why, you know? It was, um, and I... You asked why, and of course now I can't remember exactly why, but there was a, like a social construct reason why they wanted to teach square dancing in schools, but it was all over the place. Okay, yeah, I thought maybe it was just like because I grew up in Alabama kind of thing. No, 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 it was it was everywhere, and every kid thought it was weird. It was bizarre. Like, I, like, it would make sense if I grew up somewhere close to the time period where we had like 
saloons and like we had to hitch our horse upon getting to school. But my mom drove me there in her 2004 Honda. Like, why do I I'm need about to? We're gonna say, but your mom took me to school in her Surrey with a friend, John Todd. No, <laughs> a feather in our hats. Yes. So every school kid at one point learned how to bow to your partner, bow to your square, bow to the jet across the hall. And then do the 12 three, six, three. Mm -hmm. I want you to see that the flowers are different sizes and different shapes. This one's lower and this one's higher on the pot and they're different shapes. All right, so we have put our medium yellow petals on. I'm gonna pick up some sunny yellow and we're going to put on some sunny yellow petals. And again, these just follow our rule, getting wider at the edges. And then as they come down toward the front of the flower, they are even longer petals. I've got two whole flowers there. And I think I'm gonna put a little titanium white out on my palette. So I can take some sunny yellow and add a little bit of titanium white to this. I want the color to remain yellow, but just a lighter value. So on this flower, which is already lighter than this one, I'm going to take some of this lighter pale yellow and put some flower petals on. And I'm just creating a lighter layer of these little petals on there to give me a little bit of difference between the two flowers. So I've got a lighter one and a deeper one. My wildflowers are dry and they're both very plain yellow. So I've put out a little bit of hot saffron on my palette and I've rinsed out my number eight filbert brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of hot saffron. And because my brush had moisture in it, it's pretty damp, which is gonna be great because we are going to put on some little washes of color and you saw me tap it with my finger. I'm gonna put a little stroke of that translucent hot saffron on and then pat it with my finger to lighten it up a bit. See how dark it went on and then you lighten it up. All right, on this flower, we're going to put some more of our uh, translucent uh, hot saffron on and we're gonna just pull a stroke on and blot it with our finger. If the color seems too bright, you can thin it down some more. I still think blotting with the finger is the way to go. Just takes the excess off and you see you get two different kinds of orange petals on there. And I'm putting more on this particular flower to show you that you can make your flowers look very, very different with the addition of a couple of strokes of color. All right, we have completed our little wildflowers and you can continue putting as many wildflowers around your flower pot as you want to, but I think you understand the whole technique about how to do them. So I'm putting out a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm also going to put out a little bit of pure black and we are going to paint some flower centers. And I'm going to pick up burnt sienna, which is a nice rusty red color. And in the middle of the flower, I'm going to just kind of tap and pat a little oval shape on. And then to darken the bottom of my flower center, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of pure black on my brush to make my color a super dark brown. And I'm gonna tap that on here at the bottom of the flower center. And that's all we're doing for right now. So I'm gonna move on to the next flower. All right, pretty easy so far. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush. We're not gonna do anything more difficult, but we're just gonna do a different color. So I'm gonna pick up some hot saffron. I'm gonna tap a little bit of hot saffron on the top of the flower center to make that a little bit redder and a little bit more interesting. And those are the easiest little wildflowers that you're ever gonna paint. Let me show you another pot here. This is a bigger pot. This is another pot done in the same way, using the same techniques, just a little bit bigger. But I want to talk to you about how to finish up your terracotta pot. I mentioned the Mod Podge Outdoor formula. This is what you need. 
and you absolutely, positively must seal the inside of your pot. If you don't, when you put soil and water in there, it's gonna cause your paint to flake off because it's moisture's coming underneath the paint and you don't want that. So two or three coats of Mod Podge Outdoor inside your pot and at least one or two coats on the outside of the pot. And I will tell you where your drainage hole is, you wanna make sure to get Mod Podge around that area too. So around the uh, drain hole in your pot, if your pot has one, two or three coats inside and at least one or two coats outside. And then these pots are ready for planting and you can use them outside or inside. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Art Talk. We are season two episode, I don't know. So Stephen's gonna put that up on the screen for you. Right there. Right there, okay. The link to our carefully curated folk art, Art Talk paint set is in the description box below. This week, there is no pattern to download because I showed you how easy it was to paint these uh, flowers and you don't need a design for that. But if you'd like to leave us a compliment, you can certainly email us at art underscore talk. Be sure to subscribe to the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. That means a lot. And make sure to comment uh, what you liked about this episode, what you'd like to see us do in future episodes. Your comments really do make a difference. We do actually read them. Yes, we read every one of them. So thanks for commenting and thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of Art Talk.